This week I have only read a couple of books because of the fact that I have felt really awful throughout the week. Um, I had a really high temperature last weekend which forced me to stay in bed all weekend, not being able to do anything, not even being able to read really uh, because of the fact that I just had a massive headache and I felt sick the whole time and it was just really horrible and I don't think it helps that I've been slightly stressed at work recently but... I've read two books this week, um, I wouldn't say I've read two books because of the fact that I only had 50 pages of one book and the other book was about 100 pages long, but still it was two books in my eyes. So I, first of all, the first book I read was Pushing the Limits by Katie McGarry. This is a contemporary novel which basically follows two teens um, at school and they've actually got really emotional pasts and Echo had, has gone basically from being a really popular girl at school with a jock boyfriend to suddenly being the freak with the cuts on her arms but she cannot remember what it was that actually changed her and Noah who is actually trying to gain custody of his two brothers from a different foster home to himself. Now this was an absolutely stunning piece of writing in my opinion. It follows a love story between them as well as with the characters actually dealing with their emotional problems. Now with other contemporary books that I've read the love stories tend to take precedence but in this the emotional background takes number one and that is what makes it amazing and the growth of love throughout the book makes it even better because normally love in books is overpowering and unnecessary but this had such a great balance that it really blew my mind. Secondly I read a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I don't really read many classics. The last classic I attempted to read was Pride and Prejudice, but I didn't like it because it was too wordy. I've never particularly liked classics just because of the fact that whenever I did them in school, I struggled. Admittedly, it was Shakespeare, and Shakespeare's language is a lot harder than usual, but my teacher really didn't help me at all. But Charles Dickens' book, A Christmas Carol, is written in semi-21st century writing, I'd say, so... I can actually understand what's going on in the book and what's, what he's actually describing and I felt as though it tapped into a lot of raw emotion um, and I could picture everything that happened. The best scenes in the book were family scenes like Bob Cratchit's family for example. You had images of them singing and eating their meals and just being happy with one another and it was just a wonder to actually imagine. The only thing about it is that when I was younger I watched the Muppet Christmas Carol and all I could see was the Muppet characters in the book. When I was picturing everything that was happening, the Muppets is what came first into my head but I don't think I would have actually read this book before seeing that film anyways because I saw this film when I was like about six or something like that so I'm pretty sure I would not have been reading Dickens when I was six. Other than that I have got three books as well that I have recently bought. Um, I am trying to go through my bookshelf and actually read them so it is pretty bad the fact that I actually bought some new books because I said to myself I was going on a book buying ban but book buying bans never last as everyone already knows. I will go through my bookshelves actually and read all of them because to be honest a lot of them are only like this big and 150 pages long or something like that but anyways on to the haul. First of all we have Wonder by RJ Palacio. I'm pretty sure that's probably how you pronounce it. My name is August. I won't describe what I look like. Whatever you're thinking, it's probably worse. It's about a boy with a facial deformity and it's about how he gets used to life and going to school, etc. So I reckon that'll probably be a very deep story and it's very hard to make me cry in books. So maybe this one will be the one. And the next book I have, I've also heard, is pretty heart-wrenching so we'll see the same one about this. It is the infamous one that everybody is going on about as their favourite book of 2012 so I thought that I need to get this one. It is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Now I'm sure everybody already knows what this is about but I'm still going to read the back for you. Despite the tumour-shrinking medical miracle that has bought her a few years, Hazel has never been anything but terminal. Her final chapter inscribed upon diagnosis, but when a gorgeous plot twist named Augustus Waters suddenly appears at Cancer Kids Support Group, 
Hazel's story is about to be completely rewritten. The only other John Green book I've read has been Looking for Alaska and to be honest with you I really didn't like that book. I thought it was quite boring and nothing really happened in my opinion. Well the main plot twist happened but that was it. It just was like boring, plot twist, boring in my opinion. But I know everyone else loves that book, but I want to give John Green another chance so I decided to pick up that book and seeing as everyone loves it and says it's a tearjerker, the best book of 2012 for a lot of people, I thought why not, may as well give it a go and see if I can enjoy a John Green book. Now the last book I have bought is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. When Harold Fry leaves home one morning to post a letter, with his wife hoovering upstairs, he has no idea that he is about to walk from one end of the country to the other. He has no hiking boots or map, let alone a compass, waterproof or mobile phone. All he knows is that he must keep walking to save someone's life. Someone else's life. I'm not quite sure whether it's just me or not, but this pretty much sounds as though it will be along the same lines as the hundred year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared just because of the fact that it's an old man going on an adventure when he really shouldn't be. Now, it sounds good. It, when I first saw this in Tesco's, I think it was, it sounded really good when I read the synopsis on the back. But it does sound like that book, so I'm afraid that I'll probably compare the two and I don't want to I want to see them as both individual books it might be completely different to the hundred year old man we will see but anyways that's it from me I hope you enjoyed the video um, and I will see you next time bye